This is a summary of notable incidents that have taken place at Walt Disney World in Florida. Several people have died or been injured while riding attractions at Walt Disney World theme parks. Since 2001, Disney has been required to report incidents to state authorities. For example, from the first quarter of 2005 to the first quarter of 2006, Disney reported four deaths and 19 injuries at its Florida parks. The term incident refers to major injury, injuries, deaths, and significant crimes. While these incidents are required to be reported to regulatory authorities for investigation, attraction-related incidents usually fall into one of these following categories. Negligence on the part of the park, either by ride operator or maintenance. Caused by negligence on the part of the guest. This can be refusal to follow specific ride safety instructions, or deliberate intent to break park rules. The result of a guest's known, or unknown, health issues. Act of God or a generic accident e.g. slipping and falling that is not a direct result of an action on anyone's part. According to a 1985 Time magazine article, nearly 100 lawsuits are filed against Disney each year for various incidents. Florida theme parks are required to notify the state of any ride-related injuries or illnesses that require a hospital stay of at least 24 hours. Topic. Disney Transport Topic Bus On March 23, 2010, a Disney Transportation bus rear ended a private charter bus near the entrance to the Epcot parking lot. Seven guests aboard the Disney bus received minor injuries, while the bus driver was reported to have received critical injuries. On April 1, 2010, a nine-year-old boy was crushed to death by a Disney transportation bus at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground while he was riding his bicycle with an 11-year-old friend. A report from the Florida Highway Patrol says that the victim appeared to turn his bike into the road and ran into the side of the bus, subsequently being dragged under the bus's right rear tire. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. A preliminary report stated that the bus driver, who has 30 years' experience with Disney, was not impaired or driving recklessly and that charges probably would not be filed, pending a full investigation of the incident. In October 2010, Disney World was sued for $15,106 by the boy's mother. Disney settled out of court in 2012 with the boy's mother. On December 26, 2010, a 69-year-old man died after stepping in front of a moving Disney transportation bus in the parking lot of Disney's Port Orleans Resort. Topic monorail On February 12, 1974, the Mark IV monorail blue rear ended the Mark IV monorail red due to driver error. One driver and two passengers were injured. On June 26, 1985, a fire engulfed the rear car of the six-car Mark IV Silver monorail train in transit from the Epcot station to the Transportation and Ticket Center. This fire pre-dated onboard fire detection systems, emergency exits and evacuation planning. Passengers in the car kicked out side windows and climbed around the side of the train to reach the roof, where they were subsequently rescued by the Reedy Creek Fire Department. Seven passengers were hospitalized for smoke inhalation or other minor injuries. The fire department later determined that the fire started when a flat tire was dragged across the concrete beam and was ignited by the frictional heat. On August 30, 1991, Monorail Red collided with a diesel maintenance work tractor near the Contemporary Resort as the tractor drove closely in front of the train to film it for a commercial. Two employees were treated at a hospital for injuries. On August 12, 1996, an electrical fire occurred on a train pulling into the Magic Kingdom station. 
The driver and the five passengers on board exited safely. Two bus drivers who witnessed the fire and assisted were overcome by smoke and treated at a nearby hospital. On July 5, 2009, during a failed track switchover from the Epcot line onto the Magic Kingdom Express line, Monorail Pink backed into Monorail Purple at the Transportation and Ticket Center station, killing the 21-year-old Monorail Purple pilot. One employee and six guests who were also on the trains were treated at the scene and released. OSHA and park officials inspected the monorail line and the monorail reopened on July 6, 2009, after new sensors and operating procedures were put in place. An investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board NTSB showed no mechanical problems with the trains or track but did find that the track used in the switchover was not in its proper place for the track transition. The NTSB also noted that Purple's pilot attempted to reverse his train when he saw that there was going to be a collision. Disney placed three monorail employees on paid administrative leave as a result of the incident. On October 31, 2011, the NTSB issued its findings on this incident, citing the probable cause as the shop panel operator's failure to properly align the switch beam before the monorail train was directed to reverse through it. As a result of this incident, guests are no longer allowed to ride in the cab of the monorail. On July 13, 2014, due to a power failure possibly caused by a lightning strike, the monorail system was temporarily disabled. Most trains were restarted and returned to stations safely. Disney cast members were unable to restart Monorail Gold, which had been heading toward Epcot when it broke down. Reedy Creek emergency personnel successfully evacuated 120 people from that train. Fire officials confirmed that the malfunction was weather-related. On October 10, 2015, a mechanical failure stranded guests aboard Monorail Yellow traveling between the Magic Kingdom and Disney's Contemporary Resort. Firefighters were able to rescue all the passengers about two hours after their arrival. No injuries were reported, although a number of the riders reported on social media that they had been stranded for hours. On November 18, 2015, Monorail Coral was being towed by a monorail tug for an unknown reason. The monorail separated from the tug, then crashed into it, causing damage to the body of the monorail and shattering the windshield. All monorail lines were shut down after the accident and resumed operations the next day. On June 16, 2017, a guest reported that a piece of metal and some other parts broke off monorail blue landing 10 feet away from him at the Amaze parking lot. Monorail Blue then came to a stop all the way down by the Transportation and Ticket Center. Guests reported seeing sparks and smoke coming out from under the monorail on social media. Disney brought in fire and rescue teams to attempt an evacuation. Instead, a tug pushed the monorail into the station so guests could unload. No guests were harmed in this incident. On January 6, 2018, after departing the Transportation and Ticket Center, one of Monorail Red's doors opened unexpectedly during the middle of the journey. Three fail-safe systems were not activated. Nobody was injured, and Disney removed the train from service for inspection. On June 10, 2018, Monorail Lime became disabled and the air conditioning failed. Guests pushed out windows for ventilation until a tractor came and towed it to a station. On November 13, 2018, a door fell off monorail lime while at the Grand Floridian station. Disney officials reported the cause was due to being hit by a guest's motorized scooter. No injuries were reported. Topic. Parking lot trams 
On June 12, 1982, a one-year-old girl from Muscatine, Iowa, was killed when she fell from a tram in a parking lot. Topic: <laughs> Disney's Blizzard Beach. On March 16, 2007, a 51-year-old man from Pulaski, Mississippi, collapsed near the downhill Double Dipper water slide. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the local hospital. An autopsy showed that the victim died due to a heart attack. His family has said that he had an early stage existing heart condition. On June 10, 2018, a 71-year-old man collapsed as he exited the wave pool and died from natural causes. His death was contributed by hypertensive cardiovascular disease and other medical conditions. Topic: <laughs> Disney's Animal Kingdom. On January 28, 2016, an Orlando area attorney announced that he had been retained by a family involved in a biting incident at the park. According to the attorney, in October 2014, a snake fell out of a tree onto a group of guests in a public area of the theme park. The animal bit an eight-year-old boy that it landed on, causing the boy's grandmother to suffer cardiac arrest and die two days later. The attorney claimed that the snake had escaped from the park's facilities, but Disney officials, while acknowledging the biting incident, stated that the snake was not part of their collection and was wild. They further stated that the snake involved was non-venomous, and that a park nurse treated the bite with an adhesive bandage and the family continued their visit afterwards. On August 15, 2018, a 61-year-old worker died in an industrial accident near the park and the Coronado Springs Resort. He was standing on a grate until he slipped and fell into a vat of grease. Another employee tried to rescue him by pulling him out, but he was unsuccessful and the man was pronounced dead at the scene. Dinosaur On April 30, 2005, a 30-year-old man from Mooresville, Indiana, lost consciousness shortly after exiting the ride and died from a heart attack moments later. An investigation showed the ride was operating correctly and was not the cause of his death, he had an artificial pacemaker. On May 29, 2013, a woman found a loaded pistol in a dinosaur ride vehicle. The gun was reported to the ride attendant, who in turn reported the incident to authorities. The owner of the gun stated that he was unaware of Disney's policy against weapons and had a concealed weapons permit. Topic. Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain On December 18, 2007, a 44-year-old man from Navarre, Florida, lost consciousness while riding the coaster. He was given CPR on the ride's loading platform and was later pronounced dead at the hospital. An autopsy by the Orange County Medical Examiner's Office concluded that the victim died of dilated cardiomyopathy and that the death was considered natural. On May 19, 2018, a 26-year-old man suffered a seizure after riding the attraction. Topic: <laughs> Cali River Rapids. On May 29, 2007, five guests and one cast member were injured when an emergency exit platform malfunctioned. The guests were exiting a Cali River Rapids raft during a ride stoppage triggered by a monitoring sensor. The raft was on a steep incline and the emergency exit platform was designed to allow guests to easily access the emergency stairs from the incline. After an investigation determined that the platform 
disengaged and slid. It was removed and an alternative evacuation procedure was adopted. The six people were taken to local hospitals for minor injuries and were later released. Topic. Primeval Whirl On November 27, 2007, a 63-year-old employee died from a brain injury sustained four days earlier when she was hit by a ride vehicle after falling from a restricted area of the ride platform. On May 23, 2008, OSHA fined Walt Disney World States dollars and charged the company with five safety violations. The fines were, $15,000 for three serious violations, $7,500 for still missing a handrail that had been reported, and $3,000 for not responding to OSHA requests within the requested time period. On March 13, 2011, a 52-year-old employee sustained head injuries while working on the ride and was airlifted to a local hospital, where he later died. The ride was undergoing maintenance and was closed to the public at the time of the incident. <laughs> Festival of the Lion King On March 21, 2016, a small electrical fire originating from beneath one of the puppet floats broke out during a performance of Festival of the Lion King. The fire was quickly extinguished and no one was hurt in the incident. The show resumed performances the next day. Topic: <laughs> Avatar Flight of Passage There were several instances where visitors became unconscious on the ride, leading to the installation of warning cards for riders before entering the ride. The cards are similar to those on mission, space and warn riders about fear of heights, motion sickness, and the seating restraints. On June 12, 2017, a 79-year-old woman passed out after becoming dizzy. On June 24, 2017, a 31-year-old woman passed out after becoming ill. On October 27, 2017, a 77-year-old woman fell while boarding the ride. On November 4, 2017, a 56-year-old woman temporarily passed out on the ride. Disney's Hollywood Studios Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Star Tours: The Adventures Continue In October 2016, a 67-year-old man from Tennessee died after riding Star Tours. The rider had a pre-existing heart condition along with other contributing factors. The incident was described as part of a quarterly report filed with the Florida Department of Agriculture, which oversees the safety of the state's amusement parks. Topic: <laughs> Rock and Roller Coaster On June 29, 2006, a 12-year-old boy visiting from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, was found to be unresponsive after the ride came to an end. Though his father administered CPR until paramedics arrived, he was declared dead on the way to the hospital. The ride was shut down for the investigation and reopened a day later after inspectors determined that the ride was operating normally. The victim had died as a result of a congenital heart defect. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror On July 12, 2005, a 16-year-old girl from Kibworth, Leicestershire, United Kingdom, complained of a severe headache and other symptoms after riding the Tower of Terror. 
She was taken to an Orlando hospital in critical condition, where she underwent surgery for intracranial bleeding. On August 6, 2005, she returned to the United Kingdom via air ambulance. While she had reportedly ridden the attraction several times during her visit with no ill effects, she had been in pain for a few days prior to the incident. She had a massive stroke leading to cardiac arrest. After an examination by both Disney and state inspectors showed no ride malfunction, the ride was reopened the next day. The girl returned home safely after spending six months in the hospital due to two heart attacks and surgery. On February 13, 2009, the victim's family sued Disney for negligence in the ride design, failing to adequately warn riders, and not providing proper safety restraints. They were seeking at least US$15 million. United States. The lawsuit was voluntarily dismissed in 2012. Topic. Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular A number of incidents involving the show's performers have occurred since the live-action show's premiere in 1989. In 1990, OSHA fined the resort $1,000 after three performers were injured in three separate incidents. In one incident, a performer fell 30 feet (9.14 meters) when a restraining cable failed. In another, a performer fell 25 feet (7.62 meters) when a prop ladder collapsed unexpectedly. A third performer was pinned by a malfunctioning trap door. At the time, OSHA cited Disney for failing to provide adequate fall protection, including padding and other equipment. Later, while rehearsing a new, safer routine, another performer fell 25 feet meters onto concrete. In a rehearsal on August 17, 2009, a 30-year-old male performer died after injuring his head while performing a tumbling role. Performances for the next day were cancelled out of respect for him. Topic. Toy Story Mania In October 2014, a 64-year-old woman lost consciousness on the ride and died. The death was not believed to be related to the ride. Topic. Slinky Dog Dash On February 2, 2019, a 30-year-old man with a pre-existing medical condition had a seizure while riding the coaster. Topic: <laughs> Disney Springs. Topic: <laughs> Sea Racer. On April 22, 2010, a 61-year-old woman from Celebration, Florida, suffered a collapsed lung, fractured ribs, and back pain due to a boating accident near the Treehouse Villas. The rented sea racer that her husband was driving collided with a Disney ferryboat. The Orange County Sheriff's report states that the sea racer crossed into the ferry's right-of-way. Topic. Other incidents involving guests On December 25, 2015, a fight broke out at Bongo's Cuban Café between a 70-year-old male guest and the restaurant staff. The guest claimed that he was tired of waiting for his food. He argued with the restaurant's general manager and threw a punch but missed, while another employee jumped in an attempt to intervene. The guest was escorted out of the restaurant after he grabbed a worker's bicep, which left a mark. At some point during the fight, a series of loud sounds were mistaken as gunfire, causing patrons to panic and rush to the exits. 
This false information was also spread throughout social media, resulting in other guests in Disney Springs to panic as well. Police found no evidence of shots being fired. The man was arrested shortly thereafter in front of a Starbucks with no weapons in his possession, and was charged with battery. Topic. Epcot Topic. Body Wars On May 16, 1995, a four-year-old girl with a known heart condition passed out during a ride on the Body Wars attraction in the Wonders of Life Pavilion. The ride was stopped immediately and paramedics took her to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. An autopsy was inconclusive as to whether the ride had aggravated her condition. Topic. Mission, space From June 2005 to June 2006, paramedics treated 194 mission, space riders. The most common complaints were dizziness, nausea and vomiting. Of those 194 guests, 25 people passed out, 26 suffered difficulty breathing and 16 reported chest pains or irregular heartbeats. On June 13, 2005, a four-year-old boy from Sellersville, Pennsylvania, died after riding Mission, Space. An autopsy by the Orange County Medical Examiner's Office, released on November 15, 2005, found that the boy died as a result of an existing, undiagnosed idiopathic heart condition called myocardial hypertrophy. On June 12, 2006, a lawsuit was filed against Disney by his parents, claiming that Disney should have never allowed a four-year-old child on the ride and did not offer an adequate medical response after he collapsed. On January 11, 2007, the lawsuit was dismissed with prejudice. On April 12, 2006, a 49 year old woman from Schmitten, Germany, fell ill after riding Mission, Space and died at Celebration Hospital in nearby Celebration, Florida. An autopsy determined that she died from a brain hemorrhage caused by long standing and severe high blood pressure. There was no evidence of trauma attributable to the ride. Topic. Parking lot On November 21, 1984, a husband and wife, along with their one-year-old daughter, were killed, and two other children were injured when the single-engine plane they were flying in crashed while attempting an emergency landing in the Epcot parking lot. The Piper aircraft was approaching an empty section of the parking lot when it clipped a light pole, shearing off the right wing, and crashed into several parked cars. The family was flying from Greer, South Carolina to Kissimmee, Florida for a vacation at Disney World. On January 14, 1986, the bodies of a 33-year-old man and a woman were discovered floating in a retention pond after they drove their car down an embankment and into the water during a heavy rainstorm several days earlier. Authorities speculate that the two attempted to escape from the vehicle through the driver's side window as it sank into the six feet deep water. The vehicle's lights and windshield wipers were found in the on position, leading authorities to believe that the driver lost visibility during a rainstorm, jumped a curb and slid down an embankment into the pond. On December 11, 2018, two buses collided near the parking entrance to the park with 51 people on board. Fifteen people were taken to a hospital and suffered minor injuries. Topic. Spaceship Earth On August 14, 1999, a five-year-old boy was seriously injured after exiting a ride car at Spaceship Earth. 
He was treated for an open compound fracture at the Orlando Regional Medical Center. Topic. Test track On January 29, 2018, a 20-year-old man from Venezuela was accused and charged with lewd and lascivious behavior after he molested an 8-year-old boy on the ride. As the boy and his mother were waiting in line, they were seated next to a man who put one of his arms around the boy's chest, his hand on his knee and touched his groin during the ride. He was then arrested shortly thereafter according to the police although he claimed it was an accident. They later reported that the boy was under the age of 12 after the man touched him. Other incidents involving guests On September 12, 1992, a 37-year-old man entered Epcot after park closing and brandished a shotgun at three security guards, demanding to see his ex-girlfriend who worked at the park. He fired four blasts at the guards and took two of them hostage in a restroom near the journey into Imagination Pavilion. As Orange County Sheriff's deputies surrounded the area, the man released his hostages and emerged from the restroom with the shotgun held to his chest. After exchanging words with deputies, he put the gun to his head and fired. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the Orlando Regional Medical Center. Investigators attributed his actions to a recent breakup with his longtime girlfriend. In July 2012, a 41-year-old doctor from Naples, Italy, was arrested after allegedly kicking his three-year-old son in the face. According to arrest reports, several witnesses saw him kick his son while he sat in his stroller during an argument with his wife and children. An Epcot employee then went up to the child and saw that his face was bloody and the child was crying hysterically. The father refused to let his son be taken to a hospital because he did not think the boy's injuries required further attention. Detectives noted that the boy's left eye was swollen and bruised with a cut below it. The doctor was eventually freed on a $2,000 bond after being arrested and charged with child abuse. Once back to Italy, he gave the media his own version of the story. He said that the incident occurred on June 30, 2012. He kicked his nine-year-old son after the boy overturned the stroller in which his little brother was seated. The toddler fell on his face and was therefore bleeding. One of the tourists, seeing the little child bleeding, called the police. The whole family was taken to a room and kept there for four hours. A young Italian woman on the premises, working for Disney, served as an emergency interpreter for the two parents. The man was then arrested and left in a police car for six hours before ending up jailed. In October 2013, Austin Devon Hill, a 23-year-old male and 2012 graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy was charged with aggravated battery and two counts of battery after he assaulted three cast members during the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. The man, who was intoxicated at the time of the incident, assaulted a female employee with a PVC pipe, and punched two male employees in the head. One male cast member received a large gash to his head and the other suffered minor injuries. The female was struck with the pipe on her left cheek and neck and was left with swelling behind her ears. The men were treated at nearby Celebration Hospital, while the female employee was treated on the scene. The man had entered the backstage office area in the Innoventions East attraction and tried to commandeer a cargo work cart when the confrontation began. Security officers arrived and tried to subdue him. He continued to shout incoherent statements and then fled the officers. They were able to eventually force him to the ground. When police arrived, the man was bleeding from his knees, wrists and hands. 
He later paid his bond at Orange County Jail. On October 1, 2017, Giles Barnes, Alex Morgan, Courtney Toya, and Donald Toya were all ejected from the park after Morgan and her group were partying inside a pub in the UK pavilion. An altercation ensued, and the OCSO reported that Barnes cut in front of another guest, resulting in a verbal argument between them. His use of profanity resulted in his ejection. As deputies and security guards were accompanying Barnes out, they saw Morgan and some of her group get belligerent and very loud towards staff at the front of the Spaceship Earth attraction. A short time later, deputies were alerted to Donald Toya, who got aggressive inside the aforementioned pub. His wife Courtney became verbally aggressive towards the pub manager and used profanity in front of guests. All three were ejected for their actions. On November 5, 2017, a runner in the Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon collapsed and died near the finish line in the Epcot parking lot. No other details were initially disclosed. On August 18, 2018, a person was found dead inside of a burning car near Disney's Fantasia Gardens miniature golf course at the park. On March 12, 2019, a worker died in an industrial incident behind the France Pavilion. No details are available on the cause of death, but it is believed he fell off of the roof of the upcoming attraction Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Kingdom <laughs> Astro Orbiter On October 9, 2011, a fire broke out in the centerpiece of the attraction structure. Authorities reported that the fire was caused by a light bulb that shorted out and started to smolder. The incident occurred shortly after the park had opened for the day, and no guests were aboard the ride when the fire was discovered. The attraction reopened the following day. Topic. Backstage On February 11, 2004, a 38-year-old employee named Javier Cruz dressed as Pluto, who had worked at the park for eight years, died at the Magic Kingdom when he was run over by the Beauty and the Beast float in the Share a Dream Come True parade. Disney representatives commented that no incident of these circumstances had ever happened before to a cast member and that no guests had seen the incident. This led OSHA to fine Disney States dollars for having employees in restricted areas. Topic: <laughs> Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. In February 2017, a 54-year-old man died after riding the attraction. His cause of death is believed to be natural causes as he had a pre-existing medical condition. Sherry Blanton, from the Orange County Medical Examiner's Office, said in an email that, "...death did not appear to be one of its cases, so the man likely had an attending physician who agreed to sign out the death certificate due to natural causes." She eventually said, if he had been under a doctor's care and there was no trauma indicated, the medical examiner's office would not be notified." A Disney spokesperson said the ride was operating as normal. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin On March 20, 2010, a 72-year-old woman from Kingsport, Tennessee fell down on the walkway when exiting the ride. She was injured but she survived. On March 18, 2019, a 75-year-old man fell and fractured one of his legs while getting inside one of the ride vehicles. Topic. 
It's a small world. On August 18, 1994, a six-year-old girl from Miami, Florida, fell out of one of the ride's boats while it was in the loading area. Orange County authorities believe an incoming boat then struck her after the fall. The girl suffered a broken hip, a broken arm and a collapsed lung. Paramedics took her to a hospital and she was able to recover fully from her injuries successfully. The ride was closed for an inspection and reopened the following day. On December 25, 2014, a 22-year-old woman lost consciousness after riding the attraction. She later died. The woman had a pre-existing condition. Topic: <laughs> Main Street, USA. On August 11, 1977, a four-year-old boy from Dalton, Illinois, drowned in the moat surrounding Cinderella Castle. The family sued Disney for four million United States dollars and won. However, the jury found the parents 50% liable for allowing the boy to climb over a fence while playing and reduced the settlement amount to two million United States dollars. Topic. Pirates of the Caribbean In February 2005, a 77-year-old woman from Minnesota lost consciousness and died after riding the Pirates of the Caribbean. A medical examiner's report said the victim was in poor health and she had several mini-strokes. The report concluded that her death was not unexpected. On August 6, 2009, Mark Priest, a 47-year-old employee playing the role of a pirate in the Captain Jack's Pirate Tutorial show slipped on a puddle on the stage and hit his head on a wall. He was taken to Florida Hospital Orlando with injuries including a broken vertebra in his neck and severe lacerations on his head that required 55 stitches. He died four days later due to complications from the fall. On July 10, 2014, a 12-year-old boy from the United Kingdom was hospitalized after losing the tips of his ring and pinky fingers on his right hand while riding the Pirates of the Caribbean. The guest had his hand outside of the ride vehicle at the time of the incident. The ride was shut down briefly for inspection and later reopened after it was deemed safe. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Prince Charming Regal Carousel. On December 12, 2010, a 77-year-old woman with pre-existing conditions collapsed after exiting. She later died due to the incident. On January 30, 2019, a 69-year-old man fractured his hip while getting off the ride. Topic: <inaudible> Skyway. On May 23, 1982, a 20-year-old worker was standing near the ledge of the Fantasyland station when the Skyway started up. She grabbed onto a seat and traveled 100 feet 30 meters before a staff member stopped the ride. Some visitors climbed onto the roof of a nearby building, but could not reach her. She fell 15 feet 5 meters to the roof, slid off, and dropped another 20 feet 6 meters to the ground. She injured her back but survived. On February 14, 1999, a 65-year-old part-time custodian was killed when he fell off a seat. He was cleaning the Fantasyland Skyway station platform when the ride was accidentally turned on by staff not knowing he was there. He was in the path of the ride vehicles and grabbed a passing seat in an attempt to save himself. He lost his grip, fell 40 feet 12 meters, and landed in a flower bed near the Dumbo ride. He was dead on arrival at a local hospital. 
The Skyway ride, which had been scheduled to be closed before the accident occurred, was permanently closed on November 10, 1999. As a result of the accident, OSHA fined Walt Disney World US$4,500 for violating federal safety codes in that work area. The incident echoed a similar incident at Disneyland Resort in 1994, when a 30-year-old man fell 20 feet 6 meters out of a Skyway cabin and subsequently tried to sue Disney. In that case, however, the man later admitted that he had in fact jumped out of the ride, and the case was dismissed. Space Mountain. On August 12, 1980, a 10-year-old girl from Caracas, Venezuela became ill while riding Space Mountain. She later died of a pre-existing heart condition from a lack of oxygen. In 1998, a 37-year-old man was hit on the head by a falling object. His left arm was paralyzed, and he suffered from short-term memory loss, losing his job in the process. Two objects were discovered at the bottom floor of Space Mountain, a camera and a candle from Frontierland. On August 1, 2006, a six-year-old boy fainted after riding Space Mountain and was taken to Celebration Hospital where he died. The victim was a terminal cancer patient visiting the Magic Kingdom as a part of the Give Kids the World program. The medical examiner's report showed that he died of natural causes due to a metastatic pulmonary blastoma tumor. On December 7, 2006, a 73-year-old man lost consciousness while riding Space Mountain. He was transported to a hospital and died three days later. The medical examiner found that the man died of natural causes due to a heart condition. On July 7, 2015, a 55-year-old woman from Kingsport, Tennessee died of cardiopulmonary arrest and septic shock after losing consciousness while on the ride. According to the medical examiner, her medical history showed a history of hypertension and congestive heart failure. Topic: <laughs> 7 Dwarfs Mine Train On November 1, 2014, falling embers from the Wishes fireworks show landed on the artificial grass exterior of the ride, causing a fire near the bridge that the coaster travels on just before entering the mine. This caused the ride and the area around it to be evacuated. There were no injuries reported and the ride reopened later that evening. Topic. Splash Mountain On November 5, 2000, a 37-year-old man from St. Petersburg, Florida, was fatally injured while trying to exit the ride vehicle while it was moving. He told fellow passengers that he felt ill and attempted to reach one of the attractions marked emergency exits. He was struck by the following ride vehicle and died at a local hospital. Topic: The Haunted Mansion. On October 19, 1991, a 15-year-old girl from Sarasota, Florida, was critically injured after she fell onto the tracks of the ride. According to witnesses, she was jumping from car to car and fell onto the track, where she was dragged under a moving car for at least 50 feet meters before the ride stopped. She was airlifted to Orlando Regional Medical Center where she underwent emergency surgery for head and facial injuries. In February 2007, an 89-year-old woman fell and broke her hip while exiting a ride vehicle. <laughs> Cosmic Rays Starlight Café 
In March 2010, a four-year-old boy from San Diego, California, suffered severe burns to his face and neck after being scalded by a tray of hot nacho cheese. The accident occurred when the boy sat down to dinner in an unstable chair and grabbed a food tray to prevent himself falling, resulting in the cheese falling off of the food tray and into his lap. The parents of the child sued Disney, with their attorney claiming that the cheese should not have been that hot, and that Disney made no effort to regulate and monitor the temperature of the nacho cheese which was being served to young children. A Disney representative commented on the incident, It's unfortunate when any child is injured. We just received notice of the lawsuit and are currently reviewing it. The family settled out of court in 2011. Topic. Other incidents involving guests On April 6, 1982, a two-year-old girl from Sunrise, Florida, died after being injured outside a park restaurant. She was standing in line with her family outside the Coral Isle coffee shop when she and her 12-year-old sister were playing with a rope tied to a large menu board. The girls pulled on the rope and the board fell on top of the toddler, killing her. She was pronounced dead on arrival at Orange Vista Hospital. On May 20, 2007, five guests from Shirley, New York, ages ranging 14 to 20 years old, were arrested for allegedly attacking a sheriff's deputy and for spitting on and harassing other guests. All five were detained by Disney security near Space Mountain. They were charged with harassment and resisting arrest with violence. An Orange County deputy officer reportedly stated that the suspects punched him in the face from all five guests. On May 29, 2007, a 34-year-old woman from Claremont, Florida, was attacked by a 51-year-old park guest from Anniston, Alabama, as they waited in line at the Mad Tea Party attraction. Disney security interviewed witnesses on the day of the attack but Orange County Police did not take any sworn statements. The victim stated that the sworn statements were not taken due to a delay in the arrival of the deputies. On July 17, 2007, an arrest warrant was issued for the attacker. The victim claims that due to the incident, she has been diagnosed with a concussion and a herniated disc in her cervical spine and suffers from post-traumatic seizures. The case went to trial on April 14, 2008, and the attacker was convicted on charges of battery and sentenced to 90 days in jail and nine months probation and will have to take an anger management course. After the trial, the victim's lawyer stated that his client intended to sue Disney to force them to address their security issues. On May 9, 2008, the victim and her husband filed two separate lawsuits against Disney. Her lawsuit claims, among other things, that, Walt Disney World provided inadequate staff and security at the ride, there was a lack of adequate training to recognize security threats, that the park did not anticipate the attack and have the attacker removed before anything happened and that the following investigation was mishandled. His lawsuit against Disney is claiming the loss of his wife's support and companionship due to the attack. In 2011 a jury found in favor of Disney. On April 5, 2017, a 41-year-old woman from New Baltimore, Michigan, was arrested after allegedly attacking a female high school student. The woman believed the student was blocking her view of the evening fireworks show. According to the Orange County Sheriff's Office, the student and her friends stood up as the show began, blocking the view of the Michigan woman, who remained seated. The woman asked the group to sit down, but they decided to leave instead and offered the woman's family their spot. The student told authorities that as they were leaving, the woman then attacked her, grabbing her around the throat. 
The student started screaming for help, after which the woman released her and verbally threatened her. The student was uninjured, but decided to press charges after consulting with her parents. The woman was arrested and released on $2,000 bond. Topic. Parades On May 11, 2018, the Maleficent Dragon Floats Head in the Festival of Fantasy Parade malfunctioned and caught fire on Liberty Square, completely destroying the dragon's head. No injuries were reported. The float was repaired with safety features and returned to the parade on January 25, 2019. Topic. Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Topic. Miss Adventure Falls On December 8, 2018, a 44-year-old man was seriously injured when his arm got caught in the conveyor belt. Employees' attempts to free the man were unsuccessful. After being freed by fire rescue personnel, the man was flown to a hospital by helicopter to be treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The ride was closed the following day pending further investigation. Topic. Mayday Falls In May 2018, an 87-year-old man fractured his ankle while going down Mayday Falls. Topic. Wave Pool On August 4, 2005, a 12-year-old girl from Newport News, Virginia, felt ill while using the wave pool. Lifeguards talked with her after noticing her lying down on the side of the pool, she said she felt fine, but passed out shortly after standing up. Though lifeguards performed CPR on her until paramedics arrived, she was pronounced dead shortly after arrival at the local hospital. The autopsy showed that she died due to arrhythmia caused by an early-stage viral heart infection. Other incidents involving guests On July 3, 2009, a 51-year-old man from Farmington, New York, was charged with lewd and lascivious molestation after allegedly attempting to remove swimsuits from five teenage girls while all were in the wave pool. Disney Security was notified and they called for Orange County deputies. On July 10, 2009, a 51-year-old Connecticut man was charged with lewd and lascivious exhibition after he allegedly fondled himself in front of a teenage girl near the park's wave pool. One eyewitness, a visitor who worked with paroled sex offenders in Missouri, confronted the man who then fled the scene. As he attempted to leave the parking lot, he ran into a stop sign and was stopped by an Orange County deputy and detained on charges of driving with a suspended license. The man denied the lewd conduct charges, claiming his European-style swimsuit was too small. This was the fifth sexual-related reported incident to occur at a Central Florida water park in 2009. The other parks aside from Typhoon Lagoon were Blizzard Beach, Aquatica, and Wet n Wild. The charges were dropped in August 2009 after prosecutors determined there was insufficient evidence in the case. On July 16, 2009, a 29-year-old man from Washington was arrested and charged with one count of lewd and lascivious molestation of a 13-year-old boy. He was sentenced to two years in prison. 
On July 3, 2016, a 27-year-old Indian national was arrested and charged with four counts of lewd and lascivious molestation on a child over 12 years old but under the age of 16, and two counts of battery on accusations of groping six people in the wave pool. The man was released on bond a few days later. Topic. Characters In 2005, Walt Disney World reported 773 injuries to OSHA for employees portraying one of 270 different characters at the parks. Of those injuries listed, 282 roughly were related to costuming issues, such as costume weight affecting the head, neck, or shoulders. 49 injuries were specifically due to the costume head. 107 injuries were caused by park guests' interactions with the characters, where the guest hit, pushed, or otherwise hurt intentionally or not the costumed employee. Other items in the report include skin rashes, bruises, sprains, or heat-related issues. One change that Disney made to assist character performers was to change rules limiting the overall costume weight to be no more than 25% of the performer's body weight. Topic. Donald Duck A 27-year-old woman from Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, filed a lawsuit in August 2010 against the Disney Corporation, claiming that the Donald Duck character groped her during a photo and autograph session in May 2008 while she and her family were visiting Epcot. The lawsuit is for US$200,000 in damages to compensate the alleged victim for negligence, battery, negligent infliction of emotional distress and intentional and reckless infliction of emotional distress. The woman claims to suffer from severe physical injury, emotional anguish and distress, acute anxiety, headaches, nightmares and flashbacks, and other emotional and physical ailments. Part of the lawsuit's basis is a report from the Orange County Sheriff's Office that alleged similar acts by costumed characters have been reported to them 24 times since 2004. The woman did not file a complaint at the time of the incident. Disney settled the lawsuit with the claimant for an undisclosed amount in 2011. Topic. Goofy In September 2004, a Disney employee who had been accused of a different act was suspended for allegedly shoving two Kodak employees while he was dressed as Goofy at Animal Kingdom on August 29, 2004. The two photographers believed that Goofy was a different employee who was joking around until they were relaxing backstage and saw it was not their friend. The cast member's attorney stated that the two photographers shoved back as part of routine horseplay among employees meant to entertain. The sheriff's office was considering misdemeanor charges. During the investigation, two Animal Kingdom employees came forward saying the cast member had touched their breasts. The lawyer claimed that the cast member was merely looking at their lanyards containing lapel trading pins. <laughs> Minnie Mouse On June 7, 2009, a 60-year-old man from Cresona, Pennsylvania, touched the cast member dressed as Minnie Mouse while he was visiting the Magic Kingdom. The case went to trial on August 11, 2009. The victim claims that the man groped her in the photo. The man pleaded guilty to the incident. He was convicted of charges of misdemeanor battery, and was sentenced 180 days of probation and 570 hours of community service. Topic. Tigger 
In April 2004, a 36-year-old Disney employee was arrested for allegedly fondling a 13-year-old girl and her mother while he was dressed as Tigger during a photo opportunity at the Magic Kingdom in February 2004. He was charged with one count of lewd and lascivious molestation of a child between 12 and 15 years old and one count of simple battery. The case went to trial, during which the defense produced the Tigger costume itself to demonstrate the difficulties of maneuvering the costume's oversized gloves and the limited line of sight of the actor in the costume. The jury deliberated less than one hour before acquitting the employee of all charges. The employee returned to work at Disney. On January 5, 2007, a 14-year-old boy from Greenville, New Hampshire was allegedly punched in the head by a Disney employee dressed as Tigger during a photo opportunity at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The family felt that the act was deliberate and filed a police report of battery against the cast member from Kissimmee, Florida. The cast member was suspended pending the results of the investigation. In the cast member's statement to the sheriff's office, he claimed that he was acting in self-defense as the child was pulling on the back of the costume and causing him to lose his breath. A lawyer for the employee accused in the 2004 case against Tigger released his own opinion on the situation. He believed the child instigated the situation and that the cast member's movements were an involuntary reaction to pain. The lawyer was not representing the accused cast member at the time of this statement. On February 15, 2007, the State Attorney General's office announced that no charges would be filed against the cast member. Topic: <laughs> Resort Hotels. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Disney's Art of Animation Resort. On July 14, 2015, a three-year-old child was found at the bottom of a resort pool after becoming separated from his parents. Officials with the Orange County Sheriff's Office reported the child was later pronounced dead at an area hospital. On June 25, 2017, a five-year boy became separated from his parents while at the resort. The Reedy Creek Improvement District and the Orange County Sheriff's Office eventually found him drowning at one of the pools. The boy was airlifted to Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children where he was reported to be in critical condition and later recovered sometime after. Topic: <laughs> Disney's Boardwalk Inn. On June 29, 2000, a waiter and a child were held hostage by the child's father in a hotel room over domestic issues. During the hostage situation, other guests were evacuated and given alternative accommodations in the resort. The man released the hostages and handed himself over to authorities in the early hours of June 30, 2000. Topic. Disney's Contemporary Resort On November 12, 1992, an off-duty cast member fell off the ledge outside the top of the World Restaurant on the 15th floor of the Contemporary. The cast member had been sitting on the ledge when a swarm of wasps appeared. Trying to swat them away, the cast member lost his balance and fell to his death 11 stories below. On March 22, 2016, a death occurred at Disney's Contemporary Resort. The monorail service was temporarily suspended while Orange County Sheriff's Office investigated. Investigators announced that they believe that the person took their own life. According to multiple sources, the person jumped to their death inside the central frame tower. 
On May 28, 2018, an intoxicated man was arrested at Disney's Contemporary Resort after he falsely told other guests an active shooter was in the resort. Panic soon followed and the resort was placed on lockdown until police could arrive. The reports were traced back to the man, who was found hiding in bushes outside of the resort. In questioning the man claimed he did it to get reactions from people for a class and his YouTube channel. <laughs> Disney's Fort Wilderness On August 22, 1980, an 11-year-old boy from New York City died after swimming in the River Country Water Park next to the campground. The cause of death was amoebic meningoencephalitis, traces of which were found in the water. On April 16, 1982, a 36-year-old woman from Little Silver, New Jersey, collapsed and died while walking away from the water flume ride in River Country. On August 9, 1982, a 14-year-old boy from Erie, North Dakota, drowned at River Country. He was pulled from the water at the River Country Cove about five minutes after the youth slid down a 60-foot slide into five feet of water. He was pronounced dead at a hospital. On October 10, 1986, an eight-year-old boy was attacked by an alligator when he and his siblings were wandering near the lake's edge while watching ducks. On May 23, 1987, a six-year-old boy drowned in a swimming pool. The family later sued, stating that resort should have had more than one lifeguard on duty to monitor the crowded pool, and that the pool should have had a safety line between the shallow and deep ends. On July 10, 1989, a 13-year-old boy from Longwood, Florida, drowned at River Country. He was swimming with eight classmates and two counselors. Fifteen minutes later, another swimmer felt the youth under his feet in about five feet meters of water and dragged him out. He was pronounced dead on arrival at Sand Lake Hospital. Topic Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa On October 9, 1989, a 33-year-old woman from Glen Cove, New York, was killed when a tiny speedboat collided with a ferry boat. She and her 8-year-old son were broadsided by the ferry while trying to videotape friends and family members who were water skiing in the Seven Seas Lagoon. A crew member and a visitor on the ferry dived into the water and rescued her son. The boy was not hurt in the accident. The family sued Disney for $240 million, claiming that the ferry's operators should have seen the speedboat before it came so close. On June 14, 2016, a two-year-old boy from Elkhorn, Nebraska, was scooping up wet sand at the edge of the Seven Seas Lagoon at 9.15 p.m. where there were no swimming signs but not signs warning of alligators. After the boy and his family went to a movie night on the beach, he was attacked and killed by an alligator who pulled and grabbed him from the shore into the Seven Seas Lagoon. His parents tried to intervene, but they were unsuccessful, and the boy subsequently died due to drowning. The boy's body was found intact at approximately 1.45 p.m. the following afternoon, in the vicinity of where he went missing. He was found 12 to 15 yards 11 to 14 meters from the shore in about 6 feet 1.8 meters of water. The medical examiner ruled that the child died of drowning and traumatic injuries. Reuters reported that the resort would put up signs warning guests about alligators. Since the incident, Disney has removed several references to alligators and crocodiles from various attractions throughout Disney World. <laughs> Disney's Pop Century Resort On March 12, 2013, a 13-year-old boy from Springfield, Missouri drowned at one of the pools in the resort. 
He was swimming in the Hippy Dippy pool with some other guests and there were no lifeguards on duty at the time when the incident occurred. The boy drowned in the four feet section of the pool and was pulled from the water by a paramedic who tried to revive him by performing CPR, but he later died after being taken to the hospital. On July 3, 2016, a seven year old boy claimed that he was groped by a youth baseball coach from Wisconsin in one of the resort's pools. The coach was arrested and charged with four counts of lewd and lascivious molestation. On July 9, 2018, a 33-year-old cast member died in an industrial accident near the Pop Century and Caribbean Beach resorts. A Toro utility cart crushed the employee, causing him to fall unconscious. Workers who were unable to lift the cart, along with officials, declared him deceased at the scene. Topic. Doubletree Guest Suites On June 13, 2010, a dead body was discovered at the hotel. The manner of death was originally unknown, but was later declared a suicide. <laughs> Marriott On August 29, 2018, four workers were working on a hotel that was currently under construction. Two workers both fell seven stories to their deaths below after a scaffolding collapsed from the building. One worker suffered minor injuries while another escaped just in time. Topic: <laughs> Walt Disney World Speedway. On April 12, 2015, a 36-year-old driving instructor was fatally injured and his driver was hospitalized after a crash during a run as part of the exotic driving experience. The instructor was riding in the passenger seat of a Lamborghini Gallardo LP570-4 Superleggera, when the driver lost control and crashed into a metal guardrail. The crash killed the instructor. The driver escaped with only minor injuries and was hospitalized. Florida Highway Patrol investigated and announced that, while the decision to run vehicles clockwise instead of counter-clockwise as the track was designed for may have been a factor in the incident, it was an accident and no charges were filed against the driver since it was on private property. Topic. See also Amusement park accidents List of incidents at Disney parks